Now, the next step is to do predictions. So to make a k-step prediction in a transfer function model, there are basically two cases. Either you know the input or you don't. If you don't, then you need to predict it, say, using an armor model. And if you only know it up to a present point in time, yeah, then you have to predict it. And then you have to include that variance in the prediction error as well. And life becomes a little bit more complicated, but still doable. So here is the general case where you don't know things. So to make a k-step prediction, then what you have, you have a dependence on the future inputs that you may know or may not know. So x hat of t plus k minus i can either be known or unknown. And then you had a part that depends on the previous input at time t, and those that those that you do know, and then you have the noise that you also estimate how is that going to be out in the future. So if you look at the case step prediction error, then you have one part that comes from you can say the uncertainty or potential uncertainty on the input. In some cases, this will vanish if you know the input in the future but you will always have the uncertainty that comes from the prediction error in the noise signal here. And of course, you can also have the case where you know the input part of the time, but not all k-steps ahead. Now, if you have the input noise, you can write it on psi form. That's basically what you do when you move the AR part to the right-hand side. And then what you can then do if you want to predict the input signal, you can do the similar thing for the input noise, just another psi bar here to, to know that that's for the input here. So if we have this set up here, well, if we look at the k-step variance or prediction variance, then there are two parts. Let's take the easy one first. This is the one that comes from the noise. That's the usual AMA case to prediction error that we've seen before. And then we get a sum here that comes from the input signal here. And there we have to do combination of the impulse response and the structure of the input here, where we look match a particular lag, where the lag here is from 0 up to k minus 1. So the sums are for the same parts here. The difference is here that we have the system that we have to take into account as well. So therefore, we look at both the impulse response and the of the input from the noise and also from the x through the system. So we have the impulse response of the system and from the noisy input here. So that's doable. Let's just make, to round off, let's go through a numerical example here with some small models. So we in, in this case, we have an AR1 style model from the input to the output, and we have a different coefficient for the AR1 model from the noise into the system. And what we have observed is up to time 8, we have observed both the output and the input. And in this case, we assume that we know the input out into the future, so we are set to go. Basically, the first thing we need to do is we need to filter to make a prediction of what is y9 given y8. And to do that, we first filter x here to say, well, we know the x's, but we, know we need to know the errors as well. So we need to go through with, this, with the filter from x here to get an estimate of what n is, and then we can filter on that as well. So we have to look at figuring out what are the noise parts out here. So first, let's just look at the filter. Well, 0.x, we have the, sorry, go back one slide, 1 minus 0.6 to the b here, that becomes an infinite polynomial here, but we only have so many observations, so we just have to take all that we can use of coefficients. The good thing is 0.6 to the i power.
goes to zero quite fast, so the influence for the very old elements cancel out fairly quickly. Then we can figure out what is nt, calculate that for the eight first time steps, and then we know for an AR style noise process, we just have to say the case that predictions on that is the estimate at time reference time, in this case time 8, times 0 0.4 to the prediction horizon to the power of that. With that, we have a model that we can look at, and then we can look at the variance of this case step prediction error. Since we know the input, the only variant comes from the noisy part from the n here. So for the one time step here, it's just sigma epsilon square. If we want to take one step further, we have this coefficient of 0 0.4 that we then square to get to the variance domain here, and we get 1 plus 0 0.4 square times sigma epsilon square. Now, let's just show you what this gives at the end. So basically, we filtered, took the data, and we filter the data, the input here, and then we subtract the filtered x from the y to get the noise signal here. Then we have the noise up to this point, and then we can do the forecast of the noise by taking 0 0.33 times 0.4, and yet again times 0.4. And likewise, we can predict y by, since we filtered x, filtered the system here, x through the system, then we have the filtered outcome of the system, and then we just have to add those two numbers to get the output prediction. And if we just display here, then we have y is red, and we have, and blue is the input here, and then we see that the prediction interval increases pretty much as expected. So one class of models that is sometimes used is that instead of having a very complex input here, what you could have is some kind of an intervention. So you see, what happens if you do commercial for one time period? What happens if you do a step increase? What happens if you, and so forth? So this is what, you can see a typical mo model that you want to estimate how to deal with, in this case, it's a chronic delta function where you just have an impulse at some point, and then you see what comes out, but the noise here has color. So there's some structure to it. So consider there's some seasonal behavior in some system, and then you try to do something at some point to see what is the effect of doing that. So to sum up, we started out looking at what is a linear system. We spent quite some time on the cross covariance and correlation function, which is kind of the background for starting to do pre-widening and looking essentially what we'll do more of in the following is to look at multivariate systems. There we also have to look at the cross covariance function here. We look at the transfer function model where we used pre-widening of the input here in order to estimate the model structure that we have in here and also in order to be able to filter out and get the noise signal here so we can estimate that. At the end of the day, we try to use ARIMA with the x reg option to estimate models of this kind. So that was all for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>